welcome to my sewing room and welcome to Friday Sews. If we've not met, my name is Christine and this is my channel, Christine Sews A Lot, where I talk about all things sewing. On Friday Sews, we talk about what we're sewing, what we plan to be sewing, a little bit about life, and what has been inspiring us. I'm going to start out with what I've been watching or as I like to call it, a moment of voyeurism. I have been following Michelle with Sewing Bunny for a couple of years now, and I've found her sews inspiring on many times, but recently she uploaded a video where she was wearing her Joni jumpsuit by the Friday Pattern Company, and I found inspiration that will help me solve a problem I was trying to noodle out. Let me know in the comments below if you've been inspired by a YouTuber in a way that has solved a problem you'd been long trying to figure out how to fix. Let us know what it was and who inspired you. So, Michelle's Joni jumpsuit has loops in the back and I'm going to insert some line drawings. In the loops, let these long straps go through and you can either cross it at the back or as Michelle was wearing it, just feed them through the loops and then tie it off. It looked really, really cute. And I think that is gonna help me solve my Sophia Dungaree strap debacle. I made the Sophia Dungarees over a year ago. It's a pattern from Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book and I love everything about these dungarees except the fit of the straps and I'm going to insert a picture of the one time I wore these dungarees. Now I tried lots of different adjustments to get the straps to fit. And I think what the problem might be is that with the design, the straps are kind of on the wider set side and I have very wide, broad shoulders. And I think that was part of the problem where the straps just kept falling off. I attached and reattached and basted these straps in so many different ways. And I thought I had the solution I sewed it in very, very securely. I put the, put the um, dungarees on and it was not long before the straps were sliding off my shoulder. So I put the dungarees in the work in progress pile and I started trying to do a little research to look and to see. Surely I thought I'm not the only one who is facing this problem, especially since this is a very beginner friendly pattern. Surely somebody else has run into this issue and it's not just my sewing skills. I didn't really find anything um, other than Paige Joanna had mentioned in one of her videos that she had attached the straps a little too tight and she didn't have more fabric and she ended up inserting some elastic in the straps and got a good fit. And I thought about doing that, but I wasn't sure that that was going to fix it for me. But when I saw Michelle's Joni jumpsuit, I thought, that's it. That's how I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna recut the straps and uh, make them longer, put loops in the back of my dungarees and feed the straps through, tie it off, and then I'll have it secure and the straps won't be falling down and I'll be able to wear those dungarees. And hopefully I'll be wearing them the next time we get together for Friday Sews. For a little bit of a life update, Charlie and I went to Memphis this past weekend for our oldest grandson's birthday party. And it's a six and a half hour drive and I spent a good part of that drive taking out my Sophia straps. <laughs> I had to unpick very carefully because I've made it out of this linen. Didn't want it to fray and damage my dungarees. So I was able to get them out 
And I'm thinking I might use these straps as my loops in the back. So I'm gonna give it a test and see if that's a good solution. But hopefully I'll have this finished by next Friday. So we had a great time in Memphis at the birthday party. I will insert a couple of cute photos and you see this darling face full of blue frosting. His hands were covered in frosting just as much as his face. And I could be a walk-in commercial for OxyClean. I know, who wears white pants to a child's birthday party? I had this perfect little blue handprint on the leg of my pants and a few splotches. And I just pre-treated it with that OxyClean and soaked them and it came right out. So there's a tip for you, OxyClean. It does wonders. So we went for the birthday party and brought several gifts because it was a birthday party and we are grandparents. And I was just so pleased that the gift my grandson was the most excited about were the pajamas that I sewed for him. These are the pajamas. I think I showed them to you before. I had left the back open so that I could double check the waistband before I closed it up. He just loved them. He actually warmed to bed before I had a chance to close the waistband. And I was gonna, I brought my sewing machine with me. I was gonna sew them up the next morning and leave them with him. Our middle grandson came down with a stomach bug during the night. So we ended up leaving early and I took these to finish at home and I'll be popping them in the mail to him. I love how much my grandchildren just enjoy my sewing. And so as long as they find so much joy in my sewing, I'm going to sew them whatever they want. Now their esteem for my sewing is much greater than my actual skills. And to quote them, they say, I can sew anything. And I'll insert a few photos of some things I've made for the kids that have led them to this belief that I can sew anything. So as long as they enjoy my sewing, I'm gonna sew. And it has caused me to stretch my skills some to make the cute things that I think they will enjoy. Allie's sister was at the birthday party with her beautiful children and her little girl is about two and a half years old and Charlie was actually the source of one of my sewing work orders. He looked over at Louise and she was playing and she had on a really sweet old-fashioned style dress and he looked and he said she would look really cute in those dresses you like to make. Why don't you make Louise a dress? So I think I'm going to squeeze in a dress for Louise in my sewing plans this fall. I can be like a magpie when I see inspiration and ideas and I will change my sewing plans. I still have the Davenport dress pattern cut out and I've pulled out a few pieces of fabric that I think I have enough of to where I can do a test garment out of it. But I have also cut out the pattern and the fabric for the Tilly and the Buttons Cleo Dungaree dress. I needed to have a quick sew of something for me. I cut the Cleo Dungaree dress out of this thin whale, very lightweight corduroy, and I'm going to start sewing on that tonight. I did make a couple of changes to the Clio pattern. I measured the pattern and I saw that it was gonna be a little bit shorter than I would like, so I added a couple of inches to the length. I also saw a few comments, one in particular from Karen from So Little Time, and I'm going to include a link to her channel below where she talks about this, where the dress as you walk, if you're wearing tights, can have a tendency to ride up. 
Now, Karen has sewn about five or six of the Cleo dungarees, so I thought I'm gonna learn from her. And the solution she found was to grade it out a little bit into a slight A-line shape, and that's what I've done. And that supposedly will help with the skirt not riding up as you walk, because I do intend to wear this corduroy dress with tights and boots. So I'll let you know how that works out for me. What have I been sewing? Yesterday, I uploaded the first video in a tutorial series of sewing gifts, so I would sewed several of the items that I taught in this video. I taught how to make scrunchies, fabric hair bows, and also reusable makeup wipes. Now, this is something I have wanted to make for some time and I've been planning on making, so I was glad for the tutorial to give me the push to make some for myself. Everything that I have mentioned that I did in this tutorial was made with scraps. This towel was made from scraps from a beach cover-up project that I did for my grandsons. And if I can find it, I'll post a picture next to me of those beach cover-ups. I used a Violet Field Threads pattern and it was really cute. So I had this leftover toweling, I had a lot of quilting cotton, and these can be made in minutes. Everything in the sewing tutorial is beginner friendly and can be made in minutes and inexpensively with what you have on hand. So I've made a lot of these items. I'm going to be donating them to our church bazaar. In my next video of sewing gifts series, I'm going to be teaching how to make these reusable fabric bowl covers. It is lined with nylon and they're really cute and they're easy to make. I like these bowl covers because they're so practical. They reduce the use of single-use plastic and they're really cute. I use them when I bring a dish to a party and I use it to cover the bowl when I am making dough and have it set to rise. So this is going to be in my next sewing gift tutorial. If you've enjoyed this video, I have some other videos that I think you might enjoy. I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe, give this video a like, and especially join in the discussion below. Until the next time, I hope that you have a joyful week and that you find the good in all things, especially sewing.